Hey there, I'm Felicia from Felicia'sWorld.com and I'm here today to talk about how to get ready for paper piecing your log cabin quilts. So this is one of my favorite techniques. It makes log cabin the quilts so accurate. It is a fun and relaxing process, but if you're coming from a piecing background or if you're coming from uh, maybe a background of um, sewing other than quilting, this is going to be a completely new way of working for you. So I want to make sure that I get you off to a good start and we're going to start by learning how to set up your sewing machine and your sewing station so that you can be really effective and have a great time with your paper piecing log cabin quilts. Specifically, what we're talking about today relates to the templates that are out by Felicia's World. Um, there's two sizes currently available, the four inch and the seven inch. And so uh, we're gonna talk about how to get the most out of those and have as much fun as possible and as little stress as possible while making absolutely stunning log cabin quilts. There are many ways that you could set up your sewing station for paper piecing. So what I'm going to show you now is just how I prefer to do it. And um, I have made hundreds and hundreds of log cabin squares um, using this very setup that you're seeing right here. So I'm a left-handed person. So immediately to the left of the sewing machine, I put a small ironing station and I use one of the wool ironing mats and then I use a small travel iron. The small travel iron is important because uh, having a really big heavy iron can get really hard on your shoulders as you're sitting at the machine and not getting up every time. And also because your ironing station probably is a little higher than what would be um, the case if you were standing up and ironing at an ironing board. Um, the iron is also going to be set to a dry setting, so no steam or no water in your iron for this technique. And then I use, I have a pair of small scissors. I'm using the Fiskars spring-loaded um, short-bladed scissors that you can get them at Joann's. Um, and then I also have a box of flat-headed pins. The specific ones I'm using here are from Clover. And then uh, behind my ironing station right now, there are pre-cut strips of fabric as well as the squares that are gonna be in the center of each log cabin block. When I'm sewing, I typically keep a pile of the strips and the colors that I'm working on in my lap. Um, just I find it to be easier and faster to grab it when it's like right in front of my belly button. Um, I also make sure that I am sitting right in front of the needle on the machine. So when you're centering yourself at your sewing station, you're not going to be sitting in the center of the machine, right? So on this machine, it would be where the screen is. You're going to sit so you're sitting in front of your needle or possibly in this case, on the side of the needle that is closer to your, to your ironing station to make it easier to get to your iron. So that's really important to just um, over time sitting and leaning in one direction or another is really bad for your back. So I wanna show you now how I'm setting up the machine for this technique. Let's talk a little bit about feet for paper piecing. So most sewing machines, when you buy them, will come with a kit of feet. And then depending on the brand of machine and how fancy of a machine you get, um, you will be able to buy a supplemental sort of stable of feet for various purposes for zippers and buttonholes and you know quilting and all kinds of stuff. So I want to talk to you about what is ideal and what is less than ideal and what works. So first of all this foot that you're seeing here um, this is for the Bernina uh, machines, the bigger Bernina feet, uh, machines, but you'll, you just need to pay attention to the bottom part here. This is kind of a typical foot that will come in most sewing machines. And this is not going to work well for paper piecing. I mean, if it's the only thing you have, uh, you can probably do it. It's just not going to be, you're not gonna have as much control because you can't really see much because of that big sort of metal bridge that's in front of where the needle is going to go down. Let's see if I can zoom in for a little bit for you guys. Can you see that? So that is not a great foot for uh, for paper piecing. It's hard to be accurate. A lot of machines these days also come with the exact same foot with a pl clear plastic. That is probably designed to help you see a little bit more. Um, I would say that if your machine comes with a foot that has um, something like this, that sort of clear plastic um, foot instead where you can actually see the fabric through then this will work um, quite well for paper piecing. Uh, 
The reason it's so important to see when you're doing paper piecing is that you're actually sewing on top of a printed line on the paper that you're um, sewing on. So you have to be able to see not just where your needle goes down, but also a little bit in front of where the needle goes down so that you can kind of steer on the road, right? So it's kind of like driving. You need to have some visibility in front of you in order to be able to, you know, <laughs> know where you're going and know that you're actually going in the right direction. So this kind of clear plastic foot will, will work just fine. On the Bernina, this is um, a 34 um, foot and this particular one's a 34D because of that, do that on top. Here is a traditional piecing foot for quilting. This is the 37 foot on a Bernina. Um, this is fine. It's not my favorite foot for paper piecing, but it will certainly work. You can see where the needle is going down because it's, it's open in front of um, in front of where the needle goes down. I don't love it. Um, I just feel like it's a really narrow space. So, but it will work. My favorite foot for paper piecing is what we call an open-toed uh, foot. At least that's what I'm calling it. I like it. It gives me lots of space that's open where the needle goes down, so I can see really well what I'm doing. And this is my absolute favorite foot. I use it all the time uh, for paper piecing. So if you have access to one of those, these types of feet um, with a really wide open space in the needle down area, then that's perfect. Um, but if you have any sort of foot where you have some missability, like a plastic foot or a piecing foot that's open in front of the needle, then these will all work great for paper piecing. As far as setting up your sewing machine for paper piecing, once you've decided what the best foot will be for your machine, you also need to think about the length of the stitch that you're using. So on this machine, my Bernina 750, I have the option of regulating stitches at a 0.05 interval. So when you turn on this machine, it will start out being set to 250. So you can see the, the stitch length right here for a straight stitch. For paper piecing, you want to shorten your stitch. And you want to shorten it, if you haven't done this before, you probably want to shorten it more than you think it should be. So basically you're trying to make a perforation line, line along um, your seam where the paper will rip away really easily after you're done sewing. On this particular uh, machine, I like to set my stitch length to 1.4. I know that most uh, machines, especially maybe the ones that um, are a little bit simpler and not quite as um, computerized as this one is, will work with um, like not such minute intervals of, of stitch length. So if you have um, you know a smaller machine, um, you know try a 1.5 or a, a and see if that will work uh, and that may be the best. I know I have a small um, Sparrow 30 machine and the 1.5 stitch length is the best for that machine. So play around with it. But basically you want your fabric, um, you know, or your paper on the back to not come apart while you're still working on it, but you certainly want it to tear really easily along those stitch lines after you're done. So you're, you're, you're basically making a perforation line with your needle. In terms of the needles for paper piecing, um, as for all of my quilting, I use a Microtex needle, and I usually will put a new needle in um, when I start a new project. So the Microtex needles, they're super, super sharp. They're more sharper than, or more sharp, that's terrible English. They're sharper than a um, standard universal needle. They actually have a really, um, a really, really pointed tip. And then um, the size that I tend to use is the 8012. So the 90 needles are, are gonna be too big. You can probably go down to a 70 needle, but I think the 8012 um, ones is a really good all arounder that you also can use for applique and piecing and, um, and quilting your projects as well. So that's my, that's my favorite to go with. So I hope that you are learning something about log cabin paper piecing today and that you will bravely start a new project and that you had fun. Be inspired and keep quilting.